All right, let's move on to a new chapter. Let's talk about attitudes. So how might we define attitudes? Let's start with an intuitive definition. You might think to yourself an attitude is simply the way that you feel about something, and that's a good start. But let's try to formalize that. An attitude is essentially a positive, negative, or mixed reaction to some person, object, or idea. One way that I like to see it is simply an evaluative reaction. We're talking about likes, dislikes. And keep in mind, attitudes don't always have to be about material things. So for example, we have attitudes about, you know, maybe religion or attitudes about marriage, various attitudes about something like abortion or sports. Let's focus for a second on this part of the definition. The fact that attitudes can be comprised of positive reactions, negative reactions, or even a mix between positive and negative reactions. In other words, attitudes can get relatively complicated. So here's a good way to, to think about it. So I'm trying to make the point that you can have positive reactions and negative reactions about any given particular attitudinal object. When I talk about an attitudinal object, we're talking about the thing that you're actually evaluating. So let's just go through a couple examples. Think about a positive attitude. If you have a positive attitude about something, what we're saying is that you have a high positive reaction and a low negative reaction. So for me, an example would be seafood. I love all kinds of seafood. I like to make seafood. I like to eat seafood. I know that seafood is healthy for me. I've got nothing negative to say about it. That would be a good example of a positive attitude. Very straightforward. Think about a negative attitude. It's also straightforward because I would have a high negative reaction and a relatively low positive reaction. And unfortunately, some of you might be disappointed to hear, but golf for me would fall in that category. I've got a pretty high negative reaction to golf. I just simply find it boring. I find it frustrating. And there are very few positive things that I can say about it. I guess it is a chance to go outside and hang out with your friends, but it just takes way too long. I'm not going to spend an entire day playing golf. So you see, I have a negative attitude. It's relatively straightforward. But now think about something like this. A situation where I have a relatively low positive reaction and a relatively low negative reaction. Do you see how in this situation I might be somewhat indifferent? That's how I would feel about a lot of today's popular music. I don't love it. I don't hate it. I'm just somewhat indifferent to it. Now, here's the quadrant that I think is actually most interesting. Having dual attitudes or an ambivalent type of attitude. Here's where I would have a relatively high positive reaction, but at the same time, a relatively high negative reaction. And quite interestingly, that's how I feel about online education. I love technology. I like making these videos. I like the idea that students can be learning from home. There are all kinds of things I like about online education, but there are also all kinds of things I dislike about online education. So for example, students don't get much opportunity in an online course to really deal effectively with their instructor. They don't get as much of an opportunity to get to know the students and hear their ideas and work with them one-on-one. -on -one. So in other words, I have an ambivalent view of online education. All right, well, let's move along. Let's continue to talk about attitudes. They're really very interesting. Attitudes are very functional. So for example, attitudes can help us express and distinguish ourselves. Whenever we really think about who we are, we're often surveying our own attitudes to find out. So you might say to yourself, for example, I believe in conservative Republican values, and that really defines who you are. Or you might say to yourself, you know, I believe in freedom for all, and I feel it's important to stand up for equal rights. These are attitudes that define what's important to you. These are attitudes that distinguish you from other people. Attitudes also serve a cognitive function, that they help us process information. So as we form attitudes, we organize our thoughts, and that helps us process information much more efficiently, much more quickly. But it's kind of interesting because that efficiency can also come at a cost because particularly when we have strong attitudes, sometimes that can foster closed-mindedness. And to some extent, they can also distort our perceptions, particularly if we're seeking out information that confirms our existing attitudes and beliefs while ignoring newer, more accurate information. I mentioned that attitudes are functional, where they can also indicate a behavioral intention. In some situations, particularly when attitudes are very strong and very specific, they can reflect a readiness to act or respond in a particular way. So for example, if someone has racist attitudes, they're more likely to engage in stereotypic thinking and discriminatory behaviors. 
You might recall that we discussed that police officers who hold racist attitudes towards blacks are more likely to shoot unarmed blacks and less likely to shoot armed whites in a virtual reality shoot or no shoot scenario that's often used in research. So attitudes are really very complex. And we've talked previously about the ABCs of psychology, that when we're talking about psychological topics, there's typically an affective component to the topic, a behavioral component to the topic, and a cognitive component to the topic. We can think about attitudes in the same way. So when we're talking about attitudes being an evaluative reaction, that evaluation has to do with how we feel, our affect. When we discuss attitudes reflecting some type of behavioral intention, we're talking obviously about a behavioral component. And when we talk about attitudes influencing how we process information, we're talking about the cognitive component of attitudes. Many people would say that the study of attitudes is the cornerstone of social psychology. And one reason is because the basic topic of attitudes is so pervasive in social psychology. So many different things that we talk about in social psych are related to attitudes. When you think about something like self-esteem, we're essentially talking about your attitude about yourself, whether you have positive or negative evaluations of yourself. Racism is obviously a negative attitude about a particular race and its members. Even when we consider a topic like physical attraction, we're talking about someone having a positive attitude about that person, and then that person is more likely to seek them out, to try to affiliate with them, to get to know them. So in the remaining sections of this chapter, we'll answer a lot of really interesting questions. So for example, how are attitudes formed? How do we measure attitudes? How are attitudes specifically linked to behavior? Because the link is actually very complex. It's not as straightforward as you might think. And how can we change people's attitudes? The bottom line is there are lots of great topics in this chapter. Well, that's it for this section, but stay tuned because there's more social psychology coming up soon.